Here I am opening up item. I want to cd into temp and I want to create a new directory called my app and I'll also cd into that. Also let's go ahead and open this up in VS Code. So we're going to go ahead and create some files now. We'll begin with an index.html file and a styles.css file and finally a main.js file. In our index.html we're going to run exclamation mark tab to give us some boilerplate. This is a comes default with VS Code. The extension is called Emmet if you're using something else. It just allows us to have some shortcuts, which we can uh, quickly render HTML with. So now we're going to write a link to our style sheets, and we're also going to include a script with a source to our JavaScript file. So let's just render something on the screen quickly. We'll put h1 tag with hello from AG Grid, and we'll open this up with live server. So that's another extension which I have downloaded. And here we have it. So let's go ahead and pop open the console too. Next, we're going to get some necessary imports for our project. We'll just put them into our head. The first of which is uh, the necessary JavaScript for AG Grid. And the following two are the style sheets needed. The first style sheet is the structural CSS needed in every grid. And the second style sheet is our theme that we're going to be using in this grid, AG Theme Balum. Okay, so now we're just writing down the div, which is going to contain our grid. We're going to have a div with an ID of my grid. We'll give it a style, or a style attribute with a height of 600 pixels and a width of 500 pixels. And we'll give it a class of AG theme balum to match our imported style sheet. Now we'll switch over into our main.js file where we'll begin defining our grid. So firstly, we're going to get some column definitions, create a variable column defs. Uh, it's going to be an array of objects. Each object is going to be a column object with a header name make and a field make for the first column. The following two will have separate header names and fields. Note that the header name is going to appear on the grid and that the field will correlate to our row data. So here's our rows now. And each property on the row is a field in the column definition. So we have make, model, and price. So now we're going to define our grid options, which will be an object, and we'll set our properties, column definitions, to be a reference to our column defs, and row data to do the same. So next we'll use the browser's API to get a reference to our grid container. We'll use document.querySelector and pass in the ID of our grid. And now we're going to run new aggrid.grid. We have uh, access to this reference due to the imports we've made, and we'll pass in our grid container reference and our grid options variable. And here we have it, a grid. Now it's uh, not very interactive, however, so we're going to now enable sorting and filtering in this grid. So let's go ahead and open up our code editor. So we're going to set two flags on each column, sortable to be true and filter to be true. This is the most basic configuration. And if we take a look at our grid now, we can sort by clicking on the headers, ascending, descending, and no sort. We can hold down shift to do uh, sort by more than one column. And we can click on the hamburger to see our filter menu. And here we have contains and not contains. There's more filters, but this is the most basic. Now let's dynamically fetch our rows instead of hard coding them. So I'm just commenting out our row data. And the AG grid namespace actually has a method called simple HTTP requests, which allows us to do fetching. It takes an object, uh, with a parameter URL and it's going to return a promise with our row data. Now when we passed in our grid options to the aggrid.grid method, our grid options was actually enriched and gave us access to the grid's API. So we can use this now to set grid options .api .set row data, and uh, that's going to now set dynamically set our rows. We'll also enable row selection by setting a uh, row selection in our grid options to be a string that says multiple. And if we look on our grid now, selecting or clicking on a row will select it. We can hold down command to select multiple rows, or we can hold down shift to select a range of rows. Now we're going to dynamically get our selected rows. So we'll put in a button with a click listener that fires an event, get selected rows. And in our main.js file, we'll define this function. Now, because we already have access to the grids API, this is quite simple. We can just set a variable selected nodes equal to grid options.api.getSelectedNodes. So yeah, we're just going to run get selected nodes. 
we'll map over these nodes to get our selected data and we'll map once more to get a new array which we'll join and present onto the screen as selected data string presentation. So we're just gonna specify the make of each car and the model, including a space. Also remembering to use the var keyword. Lastly, we'll alert this to the screen. So let's go ahead and give that a whiz. We'll select a range of nodes and here we have them. Okay, so next we're gonna enable the enterprise of AG Grid so that we can do some grouping. But before we do that, we're actually gonna change our row data endpoint just to give us more rows. So let's just clean that up. And as you can see, we've got many more rows loaded into the grid now. So now we're gonna go ahead and gonna replace our first uh, our line on line 10 with this. This is gonna give us access to the enterprise features in the grid. So now, as you can see, we have access to this context menu, which is fully customizable. You can see it on our documentation. Here we have the updated column menu. Uh, there's the new set filters. Notice how here on the right, we have an error. Uh, this is just because we haven't set a license for our grid, but everything else will be fully functional. So let's go back to our main.js file and we're gonna enable grouping now. So in our make column, we're gonna set row group to be true. Now you can see here on our grid, we've generated a new column here. And uh, these three nodes that when expanded show our leaf nodes with our row data. This new column is actually customizable. It's called the auto group column def. Let's set a variable to auto group column def. It's gonna equal an object. And just like any other column, we can give it a header name. We can also render a field in each column. So we'll render the model of each car. And uh, here's the cell renderer used in this column. It's actually the default. You don't need to include this line, but we're just showing you it here. We can also pass custom parameters to this renderer via, the, via an object. Uh, everything's documented and we can just set checkbox to be true. And now we'll, we'll include this in our grid options, auto group column def. And as you can see, each cell now has a checkbox. If you would like for selecting the group checkbox to select the children, then you just have to include this flag here group selects children and set it to true. So now selecting a group node will select all of its children. Deselecting will deselect its children. And we also kind of have this tri-state where some nodes are selected.